I think materials engineering throughout that value cycle, all the way from the extraction of materials through the design of new materials to their application and the understanding of their, their performance and use, and ultimately the, the circularity at end of life and recycling, is absolutely critical to that transition to, to net zero and sustainability. And if you look at the, the full range of technologies that we need for net zero, most of them are dependent upon the supply of materials which are in some way considered to be critical or strategic. We have to um, recognise that all material has to come from somewhere. So material should always be recycled and closed loop to minimise the demand that we have for virgin material in the system. But given the growth in materials demand that we see for the expansion of net zero technologies, then new material is required to be input into the system. That recognition therefore means that we do need a mining industry and that mining industry needs to operate in the most sustainable way possible. Minerals uh, security and sustainability of supply is absolutely critical. All of these supply chains are global supply chains. There are some materials which come from the UK but those are, are relatively limited and the UK um, will, will look in the future to maximise its domestic resources but essentially we exist within a global supply chain, whether that's for the initial extraction of the material or for its subsequent processing and conversion into, um, into a, a final part. Um, and those materials can come from anywhere within the world, um, which can bring with it challenges in terms of uh, resource availability, scarcity, geopolitical issues or economic issues, or those associated with environmental issues or ethical and social governance challenges. There are a number of aspects to how we can reduce our dependency on uh, critical materials or materials that carry elements of supply chain risk. We can develop materials which either avoid the use of those, those critical materials but perhaps more realistically use them more frugally, uh, make use of those materials more efficiently um, to maximise the performance benefit we get from every element or percentage of a, of a critical material that we put in. We can then look very carefully at the through life processing of those materials from the, the beginning right through to the product to make sure that all of the waste streams are absolutely minimised and that all of those waste streams are captured and recycled or reverted back into the process route at the point of maximum value. And then of course it's really important that we look at the product design to make sure that again we use the materials as efficiently as possible for the maximum benefit and that through that product design we enable service life extension and ultimately we enable the dismantling, disassembly and recycling or reuse of those materials to reduce the demand for virgin material in the first place. So all of those elements have to come together if we want to tackle the issues of criticality and mitigate the growth in demand for some of these scarce materials. There is great opportunity here for uh, existing businesses to make a, a great success about uh, moving to sustainable business practices and sustainable products. There's also great opportunity for new entrants into business to deliver sustainable technologies or services within that sustainable market. And I think although the challenge is enormous, we shouldn't be scared off by that challenge. The, the challenges are achievable. Um, technologies exist or are being developed at a rapid pace. To, to enable these things to happen, but it needs a coming together of uh, industry and other economic players and government and regulatory bodies if we're going to make this reality.